This is one small step for man, one giant leap for college radio. You're listening to 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair, New Jersey. Good morning. Today is Thursday, May 14th. Ooh. If you needed to know, this is the Morning Buzz. I am your host, Philippe, and I'm here with my wonderful co-host, Tara. How are you this morning, Tara? I'm all right. How are you? And of course, joining us as usual is our newscaster, Amanda. How are you hey. this morning? Good. Excuse me, Philippe. I asked you how you were. Oh, you know, I got my coffee. I got my mic. Don't you, I'm good. Don't you dare not acknowledge me. I like to whoever I want. <laughs> oh, fine. Okay. Are we beefing again? Uh, Colby Jack. Colby Jack. That's Colby Jack. cheese. Isn't that cheese? No, that. No. All right, whatever. We're here today <laughs> with the morning buzz with the latest on COVID nineteen. Uh, New Jersey, New Jersey. Yep. New Jersey opening up non essential stores and construction thing. Um, Amy Adam, Amy Stevens, and why she was important. Brian Adams buffoonery. Uh, Kenny Chesney. Excited. Getting all riled up for new music. Uh, your weekly Dave Grohl update might talk about some Roger Ebert, and we have an ant problem that we're going to address on air. But first, here's Amanda with today's newscast. Thanks, guys. Um, in U.S. news, parents are now concerned about a COVID-related inflammatory disease that is showing up in kids. According to USA Today, this disease is called Pediatric Multisystem Inflammatory Syndrome. Symptoms of the disease include prolonged fever, a rash, conjunctivitis, peeling of the skin, lymph node enlargement, and swelling of the palms or soles of the feet. Dr. Anthony Fauci said in a briefing on Tuesday about the virus, quote, I think we better be careful if we're not calavere and thinking that children are completely immune to the delirious effects of the virus. In U.S. news, with most officials concerned about a potential second wave of COVID-19, most schools are trying to make plans on how the fall semester will resume. According to the New York Times, California State University, the nation's largest four-year public university system that classes at 23 campuses, would be canceling for the, uh, their, all their classes for the fall semester, with instruction taking place almost completely online. The system is the first large American university to tell students they will not be returning to campus in the fall. In New Jersey news, according to NJ.com, New Jersey will allow non-essential businesses to reopen for curbside pickup and non-essential construction to resume starting Monday morning as the coronavirus pandemic continues to show signs of slowing in the state. In this order, drive-in and drive-through events will be allowed to happen. This includes those drive-in graduations to celebrate the class of 2020. And in international and entertainment news, filming of TV shows and movies are able to begin production in the UK again. According to DailyMail.com, filming can resume as long as cast and crew members stay socially distant on sets. Sets will take extreme extra precautions. Even some shows like Coronation Street will keep higher risk cast members offset for the first for the time being. And the weather for today in Middletown, it's currently 55 degrees with a high of 69 and a low of 57. It feels like 54 degrees and the sunset will be at 8.05 p.m. Nice. Well, here in Newark right now, it's 57. We've got a high of 66 and a low of 57. So we're basically as low as it gets. Uh, Going to be sunny, a little bit cloudy most of the day. And uh, sunsets around the, t- the same time at 8.06 what about you in sunny Cedar Grove over there, Tara. In Happy Valley, uh, Montclair's neighbor. We have 55 degrees right now, and it feels like 55 degrees. Um, high of 70, um, a low temperature that's higher than what it is right now. I'm not really sure how that works. We have a low of 57, even though it's 55 degrees right now. UV is pretty low, 3 out of 10. Today it's going to be sunny. Uh, we're looking at some rain, though, going into the weekend. Yeah. Uh, over the next couple of days, but for now, we're pretty pretty good and it's pretty nice outside so i'm gonna try to get some air later yeah yep. so jumping right in we can talk about that last one of those last bits that i made to mention in the newscast with uh new jersey stores op- reopening non-essential uh non-essential ones specifically for curbside pickup and construction as well um this starting taking effect 6 a.m this m- upcoming monday um, phil murphy announced uh yesterday that uh i'm gonna have non-essential Stores opening up only for curbside pickup, and you have non-essential construction resuming. Um, as this, as the pandemic slowly comes to a slower, uh, 
procedure here in New Jersey. We're starting right. to see and that's more like, and more that's things. That's an important distinction, I think. Yes. Uh, we've had... We're not saying, hey, we're done. We're saying we're at a state where maybe things can start to open. Like, guess... This is a gradient. This is not an on-off switch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. And I guess my only problem with that, though, is, all right, so you're opening non-essential stores. If they're not essential, like, gr- like I'm thinking of, like, a Kohl's or something like that. If you need something from Kohl's, why can't you just get it online? Yeah. That's my big problem. I'm like, I mean, uh, you, they're, yeah. they're still open right now. You can go to the, you know, that's where I just don't get it. As much And as much as you're still doing curbside in terms of like, you know, uh, a worker will come outside, drop it, you know, on the curb as the word, on the side of the curb as the word would imply. You um, could even say curbside. <laughs> But uh, as as they're doing that, um, you know, you can you'll say like, oh, you know, they don't have to get in contact with anyone. Contact with anyone, but a, there are people that just kind of always flout uh, these kind of orders anyway. And b, just you know, if the worker doesn't have to step outside more often than they than he or she doesn't, like, might as well. But um, I will say, I it's a very smart procedure we're doing, and it's very smart, like you know, step by step process we're doing right mm-hmm. now. You know, it's not like we're we're doing stuff like you know Florida, which is just like for Georgia, once, or Georgia, where you're going from. First of all, not being closed at all. No, it's, yeah, I think a lot of stores were just opening to twenty five fifty capacity, and they're like, yeah, let's just go, let's go for it. Like, I, I don't think that's safe at all. Not at all. And I I like, I had my full disclosure. I had my doubts about Phil Murphy going into his term. I got to give it up to that man the way he's been handling this. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, the amount of attention to detail that he's been giving especially when you see other states like georgia and you know that's no, the only time my partner lives in georgia so like it's ter- it's terrifying to me mm-hmm. like to see the way some of the other, these other states are handling their business like this but i think this is a good thing i really hope people pick up on the nuance of it and like the mm-hmm. fact that like i said like this is not an on off thing mm-hmm. this is something where we're taking a, this baby steps you know like don't abuse this and also i mean i gotta think listen i have an immune deficiency problem everybody in my house has an immune deficiency problem i we gotta think on this you know what i'm saying like this isn't something that like we could take lightly you know what i'm saying like so i don't know for me in my end i'm not entirely sure how it's gonna work but We'll see. And I mean, I'm glad that he's handling this with the, the, the slowness that he is. Because you see in other places, when that's not happening, it's terrifying. No, it's absolutely it terrifying. The worst There's Murphy been spicy has done. Cases there. Like, the worst Murphy has done in terms of something like, uh, you know, weather issues and stuff like that was that snowstorm back in October of last year. That was like you two were, years ago. That wasn't yeah. even last year. That yeah. Was like, like and that was, a lot of that stuff wasn't on him even. Like, like, yeah, he got criticism for like, oh, you didn't have the salt trucks ready. You didn't have this. But it was also October. That's also down to local municipalities. And they yeah. it was October. Who would have expected a snowstorm it's of like that magnitude? It's like having a snowstorm in like May or June. Exactly. It's like, you know. So, Yes, he has his criticism. Yeah, and you, no, every, I, I, every politician. I, I, it's not perfect, I, but I yeah, think he's doing a good job. I, yeah, I mean, we I see a lot of people like criticizing what he's doing, and a lot of other governors, honestly. And I just, I'm just like, I mean, at the same time, this isn't like an easy situation. Like we've been here, we've done this, we know what it's like. No one's dealt with it before, at least at this time where all of us were alive for. So mm-hmm. I think, I think everybody's just taking what they can and doing what the best that they can at the situation. Nobody could really. It's it's very else. odd because if you see historical accounts of how the Spanish flu was handled, mm-hmm. it's a similar situation where you had some cities and some states, uh, you know, being proactive in how they handled things and, you know, their their cases going down day by day, week by week. And you have other states that, you know, just kind of, you know, I was going to say, I can't, half, uh, half, half donkey, behind, half, don- half donkeyed it. Yeah. And then, you know, you get a second wave. So I'm I'm glad we have a lot of states getting together and their their local and state and just overall governments are saying, like, look, we need to take this seriously. We have co- different coalitions of different states working together in order not just to coordinate when they open and when they close, but to coordinate uh, supply distribution. You know, yeah. up here in the Northeast, we have a lot of states working together. Out in the West, we have a lot of states working together. And it's unfortunate when the states aren't doing the best they can. We have Wisconsin, the Supreme Court, their their courts struck down the governor's uh, um, 
the governor's uh, uh, stay at home order in a four three split that ran along you know partisan lines where you know the four uh, conservatives v- voted uh, saying that the, the the order itself couldn't be enforced and the three um, liberals enforced. were just like no like every other state is doing it you're just you know it's becoming a it's becoming a political issue and I don't like that because it's, that's you know, scary yeah. that's that's scary that it's being used as like a political vehicle it's really not but i mean look this 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 country not just this country the whole world has a history of politicizing things that are not political issues like human rights like human safety mm-hmm. so i'm not really surprised but i am just you know thankful on a basic level that at least the region where we are you know we have competent leadership at the top yeah, and I, I really agree. like whatever, you know, I got to give it up to to him and his administration because I, you know, I have my doubts going in, but the, the way he's handling this is really above and beyond. I think it will still be a test to see like with these other states, like, you know, like Florida and Georgia and all these other places that are still trying to open. I think it'll be interesting to see if their cases do go up. And I think some of them, if I'm not wrong, have, right. but I don't I'm have just the like, numbers either. Yeah. But, I don't have the numbers either. So I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to like speculate on that, but I'm just curious if like that goes up and like, how that affects everything else. Cause if we, we see it firsthand, we know we shouldn't go any further right now. We just give it a rest. But it's also nice because all these travel restrictions are lowered and stuff. No one's no one's really traveling from Florida to New Jersey mm-hmm. right now. You know what I mean? Although I did it shouldn't get it. be. I did. We get had a, some former station members who didn't seem to get that memo, but I did get a I did get a <laughs> um what's it called an ad on Twitter from I think it was Southwest Airlines like saying like did you know you really f- yeah like fly you know pay now f- get away later and I'm just like no wait oh, wait wait yeah. wait Southwest. Southwest. Southwest just pulled out of Newark. Yeah, they're not here anymore. Yeah, so you would have to go to a different place. I'd have to, to go, go to New, New York. York. Yeah, I'd have to go to New York. To yeah, fly let out. me just let me just go to the the hot spot of the country to go fly. Out. <laughs> like, yeah, like, no, I don't want to like name names because I'm not in that business. But we see you people. Mm-hmm. person who used to work at the station who was going on vacation in the middle of this and then was wondering why her flight back didn't go as normal i see you we all yeah. see you okay and i guarantee you if nobody is saying it to your face people think you're an idiot well i saw a post actually from one of my friends on facebook and i think it's really true and i think people need to get this in their heads a little bit i'd rather not see my friends for a few weeks even a few months and be able to see them again at some point, then yes. never see them again at all. People yes. don't get that. People, don't people get just that. don't get that. Like, and I'm just like, like, that's so true. I would rather, I, yeah, do I want to be with my friends? Do I want to be with my family? Of course I do. Do I want everything I have planned for the summer to happen? Yeah, but is, if it doesn't, I'd rather know that I still have my life mm-hmm. and that a lot of other people have their lives too. Mm-hmm. Like, right. Especially now it's developing stuff with the kids. Like, yeah, oh yeah. It's it's people thought before it wasn't going to affect them that they were like, oh, it's only like people that have um, only underlying issues yeah. and uh, older yeah. people. And it's there like, that's There was a joke, even case. people were calling it boomer remover. Like, but also, but at the same time, like true. I saw people getting it in their 30s that were completely healthy and had nothing wrong. They were the people that were always on those diets and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. This yeah. turned into a rant about, not, about no, it's just going a, a good on one, COVID. though. Okay, yeah. I think a worthwhile yeah. one. Like, just to t- touch on the friends thing, like you, you, Tara already mentioned that she's immunocompromised and mm-hmm. her family's immunocompromised. We have Tara and I have a friend Mike who's working at a hospital. He works at a as basically a desk job, but he's constantly in contact with people he has to be wearing on most days at the very least a mask and gloves on some days even a full gown so you know i'd much rather have you know this you know not see them for a while so this can you know fully handle it than go to tara's and risk infecting her because my mom is out of the house enough times and we never know what's going to happen or you know go you know go and cause more issues for the hospital where more and more covid patients are coming in and mike's just going to be like you know um it's just like, uh, but yeah, there's a, a Annabella dropped in the chat that a friend of hers, a molecular scientist at a Valley, a new correlation shows vitamin D deficiency among patients, including kids. So uh, get out the sun a few minutes a day. Go ahead in the sun. I know myself. I need time. to. Lord I need to too. And I think with just it being nice for the next few days, like I feel like it's a good time to 
I mean, I already have to take a vitamin D supplement because oh, I have a deficiency from yeah. indoors for so many years. So, yeah. Um, but to wrap up this story, I did want to talk about this idea and I want to get your guys' opinions on it. Like, what about that whole thing about now we could do like drive in movie theaters again and like do these graduation you ever been ceremonies? To a Never been to a drive in nope. movie. Okay, there's one in, uh, I think, Waldwick, Warwick. One of those places that's <laughs> up north and far and starts those with wicks. a W. It's so much fun. I've, yeah, I've never been to one. And I think this is a great... And, like, also that we're just taking an advantage to, like, be creative in this time, I think. And, like, this is, like, cool to bring back that. Even though it, like, exists in other places still, I think it's cool that we're going to try to bring it back to other places so the movie industry doesn't suffer and we can still be creative and maybe still see some people, but at least in cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I, as long as the people working at these businesses are okay, um, you know, like, in in terms of people setting up everything people cleaning up afterwards as long as they're being treated you know fairly, fairly. Being paid fairly yeah and you know they're safe i'm i'm down for that you know also always, yeah yeah i was just saying it's always off. i'm sorry it's fine we always do this to each other specifically because we always have so much to say but specifically just being able to sit down and being able to do that as long as people are treated fairly and safely that is my biggest caveat to any of these uh ideas I agree. And situations. I agree. 100 um i think we can we can go talk about but just in terms of fair treatment and everything we can talk about um probably one of the greatest humans to have graced this planet um, um one of the most important people in recent history uh, uh that probably you have not heard of yeah, that's I mean, a that's an interesting category but this is um this is a story i wanted to bring up because you know, this is very important to me. And especially now, this is an important, you know, this issue is still, we're still dealing with this in the United States, especially um, recently on, get the ad blocker thing out of my face. I'm not shutting off ad blocker. It's, um, it's fun. It's I'm fun sorry, I was messing up that. my story and now there's a pop-up. CNN, I hate you. Um, but I'm on a more serious note. Uh, Amy Stevens just passed away at uh, the age of 59. She's a trans woman who was fired from her job and was the first one to take her case all the way up to the Supreme Court, and it's still not been ruled on. Um, She was a funeral director until she was fired shortly after Annette coming out as trans. Um, and she recently passed away of kidney disease at age 59 with her wife, Donna Stevens, by her side. I look, it's easy, I feel like, especially now to overlook stuff like this because a lot of people, I feel like, believe, it, you know, that this stuff is not, you know, relevant or not worth talking about because i think a lot of people and i've talked to people like this you know people hear you know lgbt rights and they think oh marriage equality went through we're done you know like there's nothing else to talk about there is still a lot to talk about this woman is this woman and other people like her are i mean there's so many issues especially with trans people and just public safety but we don't even have the time to get into that yeah um this woman is taking this case and you know it's 2020 and this case still hasn't been decided whether she could be fired for being herself no. so i think this is really important that we keep conversations like this going and i need and i really want to celebrate this woman for not only speaking up but having the the, the courage to be in public like this and have your business your most personal business become a national focus and expose your your the most vulnerable and uh, as a trans person listen i it's 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 the it's the most sensitive thing it's the scariest thing in my life no question it literally is keeps me up like it scares me and because this is not something that we take lightly this is something that changes our entire lives including whether employers will even keep us around or and our safety and the way we're treated in public so to have something that that's that personal to you and that important to you that's such a such a, such such a close to the chest thing and allow it to be 
the political fighting ground for people like us. I don't know if I would have the courage to do that, to be, to have my business put out there like that and have my story be the one that this conversation is centered around. That takes levels of courage and of determination and selflessness that I don't know if I have. So I, I need to celebrate this woman. I will be, I believe she passed on the 12th. I, I would love to have some kind of recognition put in place on May 12th, just for whatever it's worth, because this woman is insanely important to all trans people, myself included, and civil rights in the United States as a whole. I can't give this, I, I cannot stress enough how important this is and that stuff like this is still happening in 2020. It's 2020 and we are still arguing in the United States over whether certain people can be fired for who they are. So I don't, I don't want people to stop talking. I don't want people to forget about it, even if they're people that aren't directly involved. You know, not everybody understands what it's like to be trans, and that's okay. I don't understand a lot of things, too. I have no idea what the struggle of a black person in America is like. That's not my business, but we need to keep talking about that, even though it doesn't directly affect us. We Mm -hmm. need to keep talking about things Mm -hmm. like Black Lives Matter, and we need to keep talking about things like this. So that's my piece, and I really want to just make sure that's known. That was, like, so great. Like, thank you for sharing that, Tara. Um... I I think you're right, though, in that respect that, like, I think a lot of people miss the idea that they think everything in America is good, that everything Mm -hmm. is right and all the laws are set and everything is, like, we're good. We we made our peace. We gave people rights. It's fine, whatever. But it's not about that. And it's about keeping, like, this situation, like, allowing someone to keep their work no matter who they are. It doesn't matter who they are at the end of the day. If they're doing their job and they're doing what they're supposed to, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't be what they look like or what they celebrate or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's, what, that's what I agree on too. And you made a very good point talking about how um, with when marriage equality was passed and aside from the fact that there's a myriad of other issues, um, marriage equality passed people like, oh, you know, this is, you know, the, the gays have rights. It was, was what a lot of people argued. And it's like- I have people asking why we still needed pride after 2015. Oh yeah. God. It's yes. like, you forget that any same conversation that comes up whenever the, any, my, any, any minority group gets any sort of rights, you know, when, when black people got the right to vote, you know, there was always rhetoric about like, you know, oh, all these racial issues are solved. It's like, no, you know, like when women got the right to vote, it's like, oh, you know, women have the right to vote. It's all, all good. It's like, yeah, women got the right to vote. White women, not, you know, women of yeah, color. Yeah, and the, the, the same idea of that, there's still even like a pay grade difference in a lot of mm-hmm. jobs of like that men, white men get more than, a, like, so nothing is like equal. Like mm-hmm. everybody still has to fight for their right to be represented in some respect or not. And I think that's something we need to continue fighting for with whoever you are or whatever, like I said, like whoever you are, whatever your background is, whoever, whatever you celebrate, I think everybody should be able to have and still fight for their rights. And yeah, I think we need to, that's nothing's done. America isn't like all the rules are set. We're done. No, we're not a we're utopia. In a, in no yeah, way we're evolving and we need to, we need to continue to evolve to make it better. And it's people right. like Amy that really drive us forward. And I mean, this woman at no point tried to take any fame. I mean, in the article itself, they had quotes about her saying she didn't want to be famous for this. She didn't want to become an icon. She wanted a her right to be herself at her job and get her job back and be yeah. people not to have to go through the same process she went through. And you, you know, you can imagine how many people on a daily basis probably deal with that or either have to come to grips mentally with, you know, I have to put on a mask every single day at work to make sure I can keep my job. We still live in a country where there are places that panic defenses are still allowed. Yeah. Um, Which, by the way, if you don't know what a panic defense is, it's when somebody who murders a trans person says, I didn't know they were trans, so it scared me, so I killed them. Yeah, we still are, have places. We see that we see that excuse for everything. Not even just that. I feel like we see that people are like, "Oh, they look suspicious to me. I'm gonna, you know, like." Right, especially we've seen that story recently. Yeah, Again, that's what I was just Georgia. thinking about. Hi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like people need to understand that, like, as worn into the ground as the phrase "the conversation continues" is. It really does. Like, we're not done. We're, we're, we have a lot of things that are still, like, need working on and, 
and I'm really, really glad that we can at least talk about them and keep talking about them. And it's people like Amy and her team. I got to give it up to, and you know, the team at the ACLU that helped with this. And I, I just, I'm glad that there's, you know, people acknowledging who she is and that even and it's bittersweet now because she's gone, but that, you know, there are people will remember her and yeah. she's hugely important. And I just, I mean, I don't think there's anything else I could say. Yeah. I mean, I think, the, I think we've pretty much, at least for what we could talk about, cover this story because it's a very, it's a very nuanced story and you can look at it from many different ways, but I think for, for our conversation and everything, I think we did a pretty good job in just covering it and really giving, giving credit to Amy for, like you said, the courage and the sacrifice she made to put herself out there and go from, you know, just simply coming out and uh, getting fired for it to coming out on a national stage, an international stage That's and put herself people- out there. I think people, I really glad you brought that up because I think people sometimes, and again, you know, I don't want to spend too much longer on this. I think I've said everything that needs to be said on my end. And I think, you, and you know, you guys have as well, but I think people, the last thing I want to say is I think when cases like this come down, cases, especially where names, you know, the person's name or like people don't. I can't even imagine the psychological toll it takes of having the entire nation debating your validity as a human being. Yeah. Like that is so beyond, I don't, like I said, I don't know if I could do it. Like, this is just, it's a, like courage on a, on a, in, in, in the purest form of the word, you know? I think you have people that have the courage to just say whatever comes to mind, like um, uh, acclaimed singer Brian Adams, who mm-hmm. who just oh, you want to call a, that courage, huh? Yeah, courage. He he. So there's an article from the L.A. Times where Brian Adams apologizes for racist rant linking coronavirus to animal cruelty. So he has an so Monday posted a video uh, with a caption that included the line "bat eating." wet market animal selling virus making greedy uh and uh ch- chil- children born out of wedlock because we can't say the actual word it co- the word that comes after old and dirty yeah so basically he he went on that thing and then talked about you know veganism and and basically put a whole thing about concerts being on hold and he made an apology so his apology went something is of the lines of and these are these this is what he wrote uh, apologies quote apologies to any and all that took offense to my posting yesterday no excuse i just wanted to have a rant about the horrible animal cruelty in these wet markets being the possible source of the virus and promote veganism now let's talk about a few things first <laughs> first of all there is a conversation to be had about wet markets there's, there's a, a conversation big conversation to be had about what about, about not, we're not downplaying about the that animals that can be sold there about facts that you know de- disease have been transmitted and there there is some serious research into you know could this have come from a wet market and the fact that one of these because COVID-19 is a disease that comes from a bat I mean there has been the Wuhan lab there was doing research for years and years on not just the the diseases themselves but in ways like okay how can we handle these diseases how are we going to be able to combat them god forbid we get you know a pandemic come around because been, they've been doing research in this since the early 2000s so we don't know the origin of the disease obviously we don't to you know at, at at this moment we have no idea where it popped up from all we know is that it is a disease normally found in bats to sit there first of all make it like make it a point of attacking these people in a very thinly veiled racist rant barely barely and then, it was veiled in like uh tissue paper and then you could see it and then you know trying to me? and then trying to bounce back and says uh t- that you wanted to talk about the animal cruelty promote veganism and about the oh this second stuff. you sent me this you sent me this story and i was reading it and i'm reading it and i'm reading it and i'm like you know i'm taking it in taking in the nonsense, taking in the racism, and then I get to the end, and I believe the original rant ends with the phrase, go vegan. It's, it's very PETA-like. It's terrifying. Like, it's so 
stupid. You, like, imagine, like, imagine the, the mental gymnastics that this man has to do to think this is okay. There are, like, the, there are, there are some hardline vegans that go after uh, different non-white races for, for them eating things. Like, down in, is it Ecuador that they eat, um, basically, guinea pigs? I don't know. In, there's a Latin American country that they eat guinea pigs and people go after them, but it's an indigenous dish. Yeah, in Peru. Um, it's an indigenous dish. Uh, when you go up north to the First Nations and different uh, indigenous tribes in Canada, they go after them for whale hunting and narwhal hunting when right. you or have like, a small you know, town. Shark hunting in yeah. things like that. But like, And there's conversations that can be had about that, especially because some of these animals are shark on the brink of... Yeah, especially these these conversations need to be had because some of these animals are on the brink of not existing anymore. However, this however, this ain't it. Your racism is not a go vegan ad, <laughs> homeboy. What is wrong with you? I, I feel like he sh- like this is just straight straight up just like it, it's it's a very classic case of someone saying something uh, that they really felt that way and then just realizing. Either, either realizing how bad it looks for PR or their PR person calling them up and like, probably hey, the second one. Hey, Brian, uh, what the F? Can you dial it back maybe a couple hundred notches there? Like, can we go back to the summer 69? Like, go back on. to the, uh, the summer 69. <laughs> you got your first real six string <laughs> and, and a white hood. I don't like, I don't understand. This is like weird. Like it's like, weird. It's not not only is it like racist and creepy and prejudiced, but it's weird. Yeah. Like it's just like his 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 angle that like and like even in his apology, no excuse, I just wanted to rant about horrible animal cruelty, yeah, whatever, and promote veganism. Like that's even in the apology. He couldn't even veganism. apologize without saying go vegan. You're gonna promote veganism in so many different ways, and this isn't it, you know? It's like when PETA told This uh, ain't it, Chief. Peter told it was either Chicago or Detroit telling them like, oh yeah, we'll a neighborhood that had the water cut off and like, oh yeah, we're paid for your water, but only if everyone in this in this in this area goes vegan. And I'm just like, some people can't afford to go vegan, like in very poor areas. Like it's not like all meat alternatives are less expensive or healthier for that matter. Also, but... fast food is incredibly cheap for these for people. It's so much easier to order something up from McDonald's, um, and you know. Uh, just you know, and and of course, him apologizing isn't going to fix anything. Um, can't stop this thing we started, you know. Shut up. I think at the end of the day, when we you, look you, at you, George hold on, hold on, before you continue, you cannot be mad at me. That was Annabella's idea, one hundred percent. I will take her out. What you were saying, Amanda? I, I think at the end of the day, I think this is ridiculous because. You shouldn't be posting about this on social media. Not when there's millions of people dying of this, too, at the end of the day. Like, uh-huh. I get, I get, I completely get you're upset. You're upset you didn't get to have your concert, like, on whatever the day was supposed to be. Like, I'm, I get it. I, because you know what? We all have jobs that we're missing. We all have graduations we have missing. We're missing all these plans we had made, vacations, all the, we get it. I know right. I'm Even like the most optimistic, which is that you wanted to approach a conversation about wet markets. Yeah, and I get like I personally get like, you know, even gigs getting canceled. I was supposed to have a gig this Friday and I'm upset about it. But you know what? I'm not ranting about it on Facebook talking about like, you know, go and then going vegan in the end of the day. Like I, I, like I'm not like I I I am not a vegan. Um I do get there is a sense of like animal cruelty is a thing and we, we, it needs to be addressed. It's another issue that still needs to be talked about in our country. Like we were just talking about in, um, and even around the world for that matter. Um, like we were just talking about in the other conversation, there's laws and things that still need to be adjusted and worked into our society, you know? But, uh, I don't know. I think at the end of the day, this was so wrong. <laughs> um, he should have, oh, Annabelle. <laughs> Annabelle keeps sending these song um, puns. references in the, the puns chat, don't and she stop. just said, "There is no heaven for Brian." <laughs> like, like you, uh, it's such a good point, Amanda, because you can like you can talk about these things and you can voice your frustration. No one's no one's saying that Brian Adams needs to censor himself or anything. No, but you need to be tactful. You need to realize like you can vent your frustrations and 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 talk about um 
you can sit there and talk about, you can talk about wet markets. Like that's the thing. People have had this conversation and it's become so much more, um, it's become so much more out in the open because of the fact that, you know, there is a possibility that this could have come from these wet markets. And then yeah. people are starting to realize more and more, like, this is the kind of stuff you'll see. At what, like, you know, people eat pangolins and stuff like that. Right. And that's not right. You know, it's an endangered. Which, again, are on the verge of not existing. It specifically so- pains me, I think, in a sense, though, that, like, um, like, just these racist remarks, you would just, you know, like, you as a person might like Brian Adams and then people have just suddenly not, they're like, I don't want to deal with a guy that like mm-hmm. likes to be racist on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Like no one wants that in their timeline or whatever. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't know. Like I know a lot of people, I, I shared the article on my Facebook page the other day and people were commenting they're like, I'm done listening to him. Like, I don't need that. And Annabella just told us she loves his music and this like pains her to see that. Like it, it does. And I feel like, for as a person that likes PR, this is bad PR. Oh yeah, well, yeah. Like, as people that study like, this, like this is like, like this is just this like you be... just lost some of your fan base right there. And I'm sorry, it's just the natural being of things. That's yeah, I know, how like, it works. My my professor for for PR that we had a uh, uh, professor Bond Bond and professor uh, uh what's his name Bond Benton and professor uh, Keith Green. They both would have been rolling around and just laughing because like i remember what was it i remember talking when we were talking about you know the the the, of uh the houston astros and their issues with um you know their 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 closing pitcher that was in a domestic dispute with his wife and was dealing with domestic violence and the 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 assistant gm that decided to target a woman in the room when this happened and they straight up lied and created like it's so easy to just take that first step when you want to talk about something and just go either think critically or call up your PR representative and be like, all right, this is what I want to say. Is this wording okay? Yeah, and- I think it's just, yeah, I, you just have to be, especially as a celebrity and stuff, you have to be so careful because anything you could say could just make people upset. And this made people upset, which I don't blame them. Yeah. So, I mean... And it's actually one of those arguments I actually have a lot with. It's it, This is just my music brain, and it makes me think about it. I don't know if I've ever talked about it with you guys before. Um, but it's like one of those things is, okay, so Brian Adams said these things. Will that make you not listen to his music anymore? And do you have a problem with it being presented to you anytime soon? I mean, Tara and I stopped listening to to one EDM artist because of a lot of transphobic comments that he made. Right. And the, like the thing for me is like, does because the artist you're still show like, actual? Them. Yeah, you're making them money. Um, mm-hmm. like at the, I think the thing comes especially after something stupid happens. I, I don't really, I'm trying to not. I'm trying. I used to be really big into it. I, I'm trying not to be a part of the whole cancel culture thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so if the apology is genuine, I would have no problem. But this is like, this is like. Like, Half like this apology, if it was, um, if it was chicken, it would not be safe to eat because it's not well done enough. Okay, You'd get it is salmonella. Not, you would get salmonella from this apology. Like it's, it's not like it's and and the fact that he still tagged it with like an and promote veganism, TM. Like no, screw you. Go back to the summer of '69 and eat plants whatever on your own kind of want to have a steak now just to spite him no yeah but, sorry i was just i was just curious about that because i'm like one of, like i always like like to see what people's thoughts are like obviously we've had a lot of celebrities in the media be presented with issues either them saying comments or their personal life and it gets out onto the airwaves or it gets shown on tv and then people have opinions and they're like i'm not gonna listen to this artist anymore i'm not gonna watch this actor anymore because they've done things or they've (laughs) said things you know what i mean so i'm always just curious Mm -hmm. about what you guys think about that kind of stuff to me unless it's apology is genuine yeah and if it's not something that's like morally objectionable to a point where you even an apology doesn't work for me it becomes a personal choice whether or not you want to continue uh, patronizing the artist like unless it's like you know the artist you know tried killing someone or you know yeah you know, i mean to sexually assault someone well that's what i was that's what i was going at with the whole se- like because people were i remember when that whole michael jackson documentary came out people were like 
I don't want to listen to his music anymore. But we go through he, cycles of that, especially know, with Michael exactly. Jackson. Like, like people can't let that man rest. Like, like, uh, and again, I don't know what the truth is, but like, you know, after the the Neverland thing came out, then you know, you had one of the people pull out of the film. One of the witness accounts was like, "Nah, I can't sign off on this." So, like, what? Yeah, I mean, and, and it's the same thing for everything. Like I said, it was it, I was going off on a little rant, but it's always not something that I'm interested in too because we're still giving those people money at the end of the day if you're listening yeah. to them or you're supporting them and you're some paying person. their bills even literally. if they're even if they're like they've ceased left the earth you know since left the earth you know what i mean like like michael jackson he's still getting that money to his estate yeah his family's it's, it's, still getting like that a good example for me is gary glitter and uh, how a lot um, of hockey teams yeah. used to play rock and roll part two i was and, that's the exact reference that the article made and the, the interesting thing is that he no longer receives money from the plays of that song, but a lot of people still sit on uh, a moral standpoint of that. And I yeah, personally, no, I don't mess with it. that song. And I personally, I agree with like the devils used to play rock and roll part two years ago as their goal song. And since then they've switched over to uh howl by gaslight anthem, because it's just like, first off, that's a better goal song. But anyway, <laughs> but, like, no, if, well, that, it's, it's so, so I'm, I'm mean, really interested in the field of music licensing and syncing. And so there was an art, there's a whole blog about it online and the article specifically mentioned that song and it said because it was in the joker movie so people oh. were like oh like we're gonna cut it when it comes to because people had problems with it they're gonna cut it when it came to the dvd whole joker and stuff. movie's a whole mess but too like, on top of it but like it didn't end up getting pulled or whatever but like people were upset and they were talking about it in the whole article like should we still be supporting these artists like when they do that because technically some of the estates are still making it was just bringing mm-hmm. up that whole point so i thought it was like that's a really good point like if I listen to Michael Jackson, he's still getting the music. Do I believe everything that was said about it? Mm-hmm. Do I not? I mean, we look at actors too. We're still supporting actors. We're allowing all that stuff to happen. You yeah, know? and, and that like, director- the further this goes, like the the line between you know separating art from artists gets smaller and smaller. You know, that's just the nature of the beast. That's the nature of you know we and that's in some cases that's okay you know it's important to talk about this stuff it's not like we shouldn't talk about it but i think it comes down to a personal decision um and again you know gauging what happened and gauging if the apology was is fitting and genuine like yeah trying to think of an example where it was i know it's harder than i thought i know and <laughs> this is this is kind of this actually kind of segues into our next part you know we're going to talk about just you know you know doing the best of you in this case but dave Grohl and the foo fighters had a, had a there was a time where they supported an organization that believed that uh hiv did not cause aids for many yeah and i remember that they since backtracked on it made a genuine apology saying like we at this time we, we were supporting this organization and we made an uninformed decision and we've since then done research and sat down and realized the error of our ways and spreading, you know, this misinformation and we're cutting ties and we're working with organizations that actually, you know, promote how these things work and I promote actual information. That's, that's accurate. I think that's, I mean, I, I, I like, that's why, that's why I love the food fighters so much. Like, you know, they, like, own up they, to it. they own up to it. They realize they made their mistake and they're like, you know what? We did our research and we're not going to support them anymore. That's like mm-hmm. all you have to say. And I, like, I didn't know that, but like, that makes me feel more proud to be a food fighters fan that they thought they realized they did something wrong. They acknowledge the mistake and they're just like, we're sorry. And we're not supporting them anymore. That's all you got to yeah. do at the end of the day. I mean, ugh. But I think keep keeping on Dave Grohl since we're doing basically we've done our a, weekly a, Dave Grohl. <laughs> uh, it, it helps that he's posting up weekly stories too. So he put up a story. This is from NME.com. Dave Grohl shares memories of the time Bruce Springsteen attended a Foo Fighters show. Asterisk. Asterisk. Uh, so the, the article goes on talking about, you know, this is years and years ago. And this is a quote from Dave Grohl. I was again reminded of not only the human being behind every superhero, but also the reason millions of people identify with, with him. He is real. Uh, he 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 turned up to one of the early shows, but he wasn't there to see the Foo Fighters. He was there <laughs> to watch the support act. And uh, Dave Will said there was quote devastating humiliation unquote. They talked about uh, talking together and stuff like that. Uh, went backstage to to talk to Dave. Uh, you know, Grohl said quote something he obviously understood very well. 
uh, when he asked where he watched the show from, he said that he stood in the crowd, like just like everyone else. Of course he did. He was searching for that connection. Uh, a few days later, I received a letter from Bruce handwritten on hotel stationery that explained this very clearly. When you look out at the audience, he wrote, you see yourself, you should see yourself in them just as they see themselves in you. Man. Bruce Springsteen. Wow. Deep. Like first, firstly, Bruce Springsteen, like, you know, sticking true to his guns and sticking true to, to, to what he's always like. There's a reason why he's so iconic and he is the boss, you know? And and Dave Grohl himself, who who has that similar kind of mindset. I mean, there was there's a quote that's always attributed to Dave that's uh I sing when you sing a song to ten thousand people, yes. those people sing the song back at you it's here, it's for ten thousand different, different reasons. Ways. And yeah. it's just yeah. like yeah i love that one like come on like every t- every day i read something about dave Grohl, it's just kind of like you can't you like can't how do you it. hate this man like you just can't he's just he's uh, like like come on courtney come on courtney love like how can you hate oh, this man we can't we can't no, with don't her. Go there, we don't man. have the time we don't have the time no, we don't have the time on tuesday well yeah he he was talking about it on tuesday on the tuesday buzz he was talking about courtney love yeah ryan and i were about to tee off as well but you know, because they were talking about that estate sale where they oh, were putting the, out the, the, uh, guitar, the unplugged guitar, the cardigan that had sold beforehand for almost 350k from that same show. But just you know, Dave Grohl's a genuine person. He's. I feel like even himself... I feel like Courtney Love can't even hate Dave Grohl. No, <laughs> honestly, like like, the, like Dave Grohl is. There's always something. There's always something that he's going to say, and always something he says that I I always end up appreciating. Like when when music streaming first became a thing, his whole opinion of it as was like for me it doesn't matter the money that i might be making depending on where it's going because i've already made my money i'm already you know at a position where i'm comfortable and everything and then he's like but for these smaller artists they're getting pennies on the dollar for their music and it affects them so i'm fully supporting these small artists and you know it's just i I most of the content of his character i completely agree with that i as an artist that posts music online I have not seen anything yet. And it's because I won't see anything until there's thousands and thousands of streams. And even at that point, I still won't see a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's really sad. If no, if you don't, if you guys don't know it, go on to like, you could look it up how much someone makes off Spotify. It's like, Point zero 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 zero, zero, zero yeah. like four I mean, and it's like ridiculous. It was big and, and a kids table put up a video once of their Spotify royalties. It was like less, it was like was it like six dollars or something? And didn't you talk to David McLean about that too at, when you interviewed him years no, and years ago? No, I don't believe I talked to him about that. It's been a long time though. But people, I, you you could literally see that the music industry is like literally the one that people suffer the most in when it comes to that those like funds. And I such mean, like it, that. oh, if this was no. any other employment situation, people would be suing left, right, and center. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Speaking of speaking of fan bases, right? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Hold on. Comment on Facebook for Fran Marino. You guys quoting Dave Grohl like he is. F- I mean, like you know, at he's this the point, com- I think he's I the commander. Rather... He's the commander in chief of rock and roll. Thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> he's the commander in chief of rock and roll. Hi, mama. We found. <laughs> I found on Twitter. Uh, someone quoted uh, a quick Roger Ebert. The beginning of his yeah uh, this is interesting this is not related but you saw this on twitter last night and you did the backtracking for this so this goes it, all the way back to 2009 yes yeah, so about a movie called fandom which was basically supposed to represent fandom in a in a in a good way but it just kind of representative for the way it is and i'll, I'll run through it real quick because it is it is relevant um uh, a lot of fans are basically fans of fandom itself. It's all about them. They have mastered Star Wars or Star Trek universe or whatever, but their object of veneration are useful mainly as a backdrop to their own devotion. Anyone who would camp out in a tent on the sidewalk for weeks in order to finish the first line of the movie is more into camping in the sidewalk than movies. Basically, all he's talking about is how fandom becomes a replacement for social skills. You know, uh, there's a line, if you are Luke and Skywalker and she is Princess Leia, you already know what to say to each other, which is so much safer than having to ad-lib it, you know? Like the, he called the obsession a beard. I think, and there's some truth to that. There is, and this was back in 2009, so a decade, almost a decade later. Roger Ebert very much summed up um, the way fandom is treated nowadays in its most extreme sense. Because there's I mean, nothing I have, wrong with fandom. There's yeah, nothing wrong with fandom. 
Um, I was going to say, and there's also nothing for using, you know, pop culture stuff is, you know, especially if you're not, your social skills aren't that strong. That's okay. That's and, fine. And That's I not think, what we're, but like, it's this thing where like, it becomes like. Your fandom becomes your personality and your fandom becomes your, your, a crutch to go through every single social situation as opposed to fandom is great for breaking the ice with people. I mean, Tara, oh, yeah. I, we got into talking to each other because of uh, Guns, and Rose, Guns and Roses and Lincoln Park. I had Appetite for Destruction. Like I was listening to it and you looked at me and you're just like, oh, that's a good album. And then we started talking music back and forth. Yeah. Like, I think there's also that though. And there's also like fandom. Do you know capital what I mean? Like, F. You're, like, F yeah, fandom, like, yeah. no, capital, the whole word is like uppercase. Fandom. <laughs> yeah, like, like, no, yeah, like, I know people that are literally like, they live, breathe nothing else but that subject. And it's or like, when okay, you think well, you know it better than the author. Mm-hmm. Star Wars and Star Trek is. Do you a, remember the Walking you're... Dead thing? <sighs> we were at a, we were waiting to go into the Nine Inch Nails, uh, was it? Garden show, yeah. And it was around the time where people thought Daryl from The Walking Dead was going to die. It was like, oh, f- this is like 2000. And people watch back probably every episode like 50 times. So they'd be yeah. like, I need to know everything. They're like, no, 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 no. This is right. This is wrong. And like, but then this one person at the show, at the show, I remember this. Like, we were waiting in line for the gates to open, and this person had a shirt with Daryl from The Walking Dead and the text, if Daryl dies, we riot. Which is also really funny, too, for me because. Um, you would never first off you could never second and, of all you wouldn't do it for real social issues and you're gonna do it about a character from the walking dead whatever. also like so if we're talking fandom in that situation and this is a deep cut daryl was never even a, a character in the comics that in, eventually inspired the tv show he was created just because the writers were like oh let's make another cool character which is fine right do whatever you want but like, and it's this thing where like you think you know better than the writers like even with star wars like listen I have some problems with the new Star Wars trilogy, but they're not because I think I know better than the writers or I, th- I know what these characters would do. It's because they send some really bad messages in the last movie. But I, like, these people that are, like, you know, think that, you know... And usually you'll notice this. It's usually misogynistic and somewhat racist. People, don't, you, people didn't have a problem with the new Star Wars until it was a black person... <laughs> in the lead role and a Latinx or until person. the neck or and a Latinx person or the ne- or the last Jedi might be a woman. Then we had problems, but you'll no, notice. Don't even get me started with Ray Lowe. Up, like my favorite analogy to me, my favorite analogy of toxic fandoms, uh, syndrome from the Incredibles. Mm-hmm. He's the best analogy of a toxic fan. Um, you know, having these thinking he knows the person better than they know themselves, having all these crazy expectations, and then when that person doesn't meet them, he just turns into the biggest hater on vicious person on earth. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. as much as I hate Eminem, Stan. The no, song. yeah, I agree. I I see it a lot in. I know you guys are probably not as connected with it. I don't know if you are, but um, I'm really into theater as a theater major. Um, yeah. and like hope. people. <laughs> well and like i see like the fandoms for like each show emerge and people like get so involved in it and then they also hate on other people for like liking it though at the same time so it just ends up being big fights so like you guys know the musical hamilton and stuff that yeah. came out like people a lot of people that weren't into theater emerged from like liking that and it's like oh, okay that's great we're getting people involved in theater but people would then start hating on each other because they're like oh they're only here for hamilton and like maybe dear evan hansen and then they just start hating on each other it's like this is not what this is about this is about people liking a show relax and i know you know everything about hamilton but chill exactly yeah you also that's just turns into classic gatekeeping in terms Mm -hmm. of like oh you need like oh you like this band or you like this you know movie or this character name me like you know five songs that aren't their fan yeah you're not a real fan name all of their albums (laughs) in chronological order yeah yeah name every song they ever wrote like exactly all right Um, so let's speaking of people being weird in large groups (laughs) we got one more story before we bounce out of here but what I, I, I just got to say something. This headline? I need you to hit you with this headline. Numb. Let's go. Let's Slurp. go. Tara, hit Lift to that. the queen. Okay, so either you're a, two things. Either you're a furry on the internet or you're quoting our next story. A million people are pretending to be ants on Facebook and saying it's therapeutic. So more than 18,000 users responded to an ant 
Ants on ice, a post of ants of ice cream. Writing comments like nom, slurp, and lift, period, two, period, the, period, queen. I'm going to do this story from down here because I don't want to look at this. If you're down there, you're an ant. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not associated with this movement. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, sir. Well, like how weird this is. Like you could just, you know, we were just talking about people being obsessed with like a movie or a TV show and that's like one level. But then how do we go from jumping to being like, I don't know, maybe like role playing a character from a movie on Facebook in a Facebook group or whatever, or pretending Which you're in that, all the you're, time. you know, LARPing, doing things like that. Like, yeah, there's yeah, so many, exactly. things, there's like, so even, many. Like, even like if you're like, with, you know, talking to somebody else and you're both like in on it, whatever, whatever. Like, yeah. but like, what? Bro, ants? Why you do imagine, you want to be an Can you imagine like scrolling through like your aunt's Facebook, aunt? <laughs> can you imagine scrolling through your uncle's facebook it's, it's too punny i can't do it imagine it scrolling through your uncle's facebook and like you're like oh let's see what you know what uncle jimmy is following lift much lift. link like this, this is from the article this is an article out of um nbc news and there's a part towards, towards yeah, the just in case you think we're making this up uh, members of the group role play as members of an ant colony posting pictures of ants participating in various activities including crawling on foot and carrying leaves uh they'll, they'll type actions like dig lift bite um act in service of the colony's queen it is a private group that you need it to, makes me want to like join the group to see like what's going on and <laughs> there's, there's like a, an approval period to it where they have to review uh uh questions and you, it's a series of questions you have to audition so a lot of facebook groups are, are closed yeah, off with questions of me. yeah send in your reel because like, because the me, questions are specifically the there the questions tend to be specifically there to make sure someone's joining the group <laughs> for the right oh, reason but one of the questions is oh, have you watched pixar's a bug's life uh, no not really i've seen I, you can't you can't join the group then oh but you know what i did watch its rival movie ants, ants? with a z God, that movie was terrifying. <laughs> that movie's absolutely murdered. terrifying. The, the part where, like, what was it? Like, termites so wait, or whatever? Wait, 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 and they wait, wait, murdered yeah, all the, the ants? Battle. So, wait, I have to send in my reel for this, but do I have to send in my resume where I have to say I have past experience playing other ants? Your yeah. resume is just, like, a list of, like, lift, ant, munch, numb. Yeah, I, I, I've carried leaves before. <laughs> you know, quarantine does weird things to people. And you know, so far, I think this is one of the weirder <laughs> ones I've seen. I think, like, can't you guys just watch Netflix like normal people? <laughs> Even like, you know, yeah, like LARP. You can LARP. LARP. LARPing is live-action role-play. You could do that. You could you could text role-play anything no, you want. Like when I can you run about- a marathon with a sack of potatoes, though? I cannot. <laughs> you gotta, gotta be but, able to, What is it? Well, I can't run a marathon with, 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 I can't run a marathon, anything, like, yeah, I was gonna say with, like, nothing in my hands. Um, but like, yeah, like with the LARPing thing, like I see on Facebook, people will join Facebook groups to be like, I'm going to be, we're going to do a role play of this musical or this show, or we're going to read this book and we're going to play the characters, whatever. We've seen it all, but this is, this. Just, How did you arrive on ants? Like I'd say why this, ants this is too? A, why can't I'd you say dogs this, or something? I'd say this elevate, oh, well, I mean, dogs, that's when you just get furries, but I'd say like, you'd elevate the situation in terms of uh, LARPing when you talk about ants, but like ants are down so low that you can only elevate them so much. You have but to like, link up and go all the way up. I don't know, but like, I feel like there's just so many cooler animals than being an ant. It's yeah. like, could be even, snakes. Like, maybe, snakes. Oh, maybe this is a Why continuation of the Brian Adams vegan thing and they all just want to eat leaves. Maybe Brian Adams, one of the ants in the ant Facebook group. <laughs> He's the queen. Like, He's the queen. <laughs> That's it. This is, we've cracked the code <laughs> on like, 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. But why couldn't it be like, I don't know, like, <laughs> why couldn't it be like a jungle or something? And they all pick jungle animals. Like, right. why does it have to I, be I'll be a toucan. Farm animals. Uh, but I, I think, I think there's a bout of insanity. Go is, check it out. Oh, oh, with the, if you, if you want to be an ant, you can go on Facebook and become yeah. one if you really want to. Yeah. yeah. But Don't if not. Don't stop you. Do what makes you happy, I guess. Munch, but, like, lift for the queen. Yeah. But uh, we've, we're reaching the end of the buzz this morning uh, where we find out that Annabella would like to be a flamingo if she had to choose any animal. <laughs> well, we'll okay, be, real we'll quick be before we guys. leave, animal pick, go. Snake. Go. Speed I round. think I'd be a Snake. tiger. I'd like to be a tiger. Uh, Lizard. Why? Any any specific uh, lizard, just lizard in general. Like a bearded dragon. With like the... Ooh, yeah. Although um, my boyfriend does call me a koala because I'm clingy. 
There you go. Uh, TV koala. Works. But start your start your jungle jungle Facebook page. Maybe we'll join. <laughs> anyway, we are at the top of the hour on ninety point three WMSC Upper Montclair. Thank you so much for tuning into the morning buzz. I'm Tara. I am Philippe. Oh, and I'm Amanda. Also, and, be uh, sure morning buzz, summer buzz starts next yes. week, Monday through Thursday. Nice. Are we on Ten. Tuesday, Amanda? What day are you on? I'm on Monday. I won't, I won't be with you guys anymore. We, we I'm have, sorry. We have Hallie with us on I'll be, Tuesday. I'll be, I'll be back behind the scenes helping run the show, though. Good. So I'll uh, be here. Because this was awesome. It was. Yeah. It was really fun. Really well. Yeah. Uh, I, I enjoyed working uh, with you guys. I hope ten, everyone enjoyed those flamingos for a ten second. 10 to there. 11 next week, by the way. Yes, to everybody 10 to 11. Be viewing. We're doing it, pushing an hour later. Nice. Yeah, give a, some time to sleep in for, for, for us working yes. here. But uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful week and a wonderful weekend. Tune in tomorrow. We're still doing tomorrow 9 to 10. Uh, but uh, it'll be our last show of the fall semester, the spring, spring semester. semester. You but did that on Tuesday. <laughs> I did it on Tuesday. Last show of the spring semester, but we'll be right back on Monday for the fall semester at a new time at, from 10 to 11 a.m. Still doing the buzz throughout the summer. We're here for you. We're going to put out content. Don't worry. Yes, I know some semesters, Annabelle. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> absolutely losing my mind right now. It's the ants. Quarantine. It's quarantine the ants with your head. I don't, I don't have the hive mind. I can't, you know. You run, no, you run that story. It messes with your head a little bit. We need, like, air, like, after that. Air. But, um, air. yeah, I hope everyone has a good weekend. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll hop in Tara's show later today. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. And, uh, yeah, see ya. Bye. Deuces. You are listening to 90.3 WMSC up in Montclair, New Thanks. Jersey.